What is going on guys and girls? Welcome to another video. My name is Ryan Roots and I am a full-time online reseller. I buy stuff and then I sell it for a profit online. That's how we make a full-time living. This YouTube channel is all about teaching you guys the ins and outs of reselling and how to make good decisions and avoid making bad decisions. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you six proven techniques on how you can increase your eBay sales. Now, I just wanna clarify where I'm coming from. We've been selling full-time on eBay for quite a while and for the past five years in a row, we've done over six figures a year just on eBay alone. And I'm telling you that not to brag, but I want you to understand that if you're gonna learn from somebody, make sure that they're actually doing what they're teaching you. The other thing is, these are just techniques that we know work for us. It doesn't mean that they are 100% perfect techniques. And it doesn't mean that you can't get similar or the same results by not doing the things I'm gonna share with you today. But I just wanna share with you these particular six things because over the years and years, we know that they work and we know that when people implement them into their eBay business, we know that they do get more sales. Also guys and girls, if you have any friends or colleagues that you feel could use this information, please feel free to share this video. You can share it to Facebook groups as well if you like. And do me a favor, if at any time during this video, if you hear some something that you like, please hit the thumbs up button on the video. It just tells us that we're doing a good job and it tells us to continue to make more videos like this. So with that being said, guys, let's jump into this. So number one, and this may be the most important thing on the list, to be honest with you. Number one is take better pictures. It's 2020 and your pictures sell the listings. Obviously there's other things you have to do to get the item sold, but the first thing people see, the first thing they look at is the pictures that you've taken and the pictures that you've uploaded to eBay. So you can do things like use a white background. That's what eBay and Google want us to do. Again, you don't have to do that, but using a white background is what they recommend. On mobile, you can also use eBay's background removal tool. So even if you don't have like a fancy photo setup, if you're just taking a picture of the item on a semi-white background and using your mobile device to upload the pictures, you can use that background removal tool and it's not perfect, but it does work and it does help clean up the pictures. The other thing is make sure you're taking square pictures. So one by one aspect ratio, if you're using an actual camera or like on the iPhone, you can just switch it to square mode, but eBay wants it to be square one by one aspect ratio pictures. And again, guys, this doesn't have to be expensive. You don't have to overcomplicate it. All I'm saying is if you're taking a picture of a t-shirt, for example, don't hang it on the back of your door at home. Don't lay it on your bed sheets, on your wrinkly bed sheets. Go out to, um, go out to the dollar store, the dollar general, and just get like a, a couple of those white poster boards and use that. Lay it flat on the poster board and use that. Use that background removal tool and it just makes you look a lot more professional um, and it'll definitely help your stuff sell faster. The other thing I would recommend is um, we have a video on how to build a giant hanger. So if you're not doing like flat lay pictures on the ground, you can build this hanger to actually hang up the items and it just makes it look like a nice flat lay picture. So we use that for larger items. So if we have like a triple XL shirt, we'll use that hanger and it kind of just makes it look a bit more professional up on the wall. You can also use like a steam wand if you wanna get really pro, you can use a steam wand to get the wrinkles out before you take pictures. And then the other thing that we like to do is we actually take a picture of the measurements for clothing items. So we'll take a picture of the measurements and we include that in the listing. And we do that because, um, again, going back to pictures, most people don't go deep into the description. Um, they don't really care. They're just scrolling through and looking at the pictures. So we want those measurements to be right in front of their face. It's not a question at all. They don't have to ask us how long is the shirt, how wide is the shirt. They have it right in front of their faces. And I feel like that helped, one helps us sell the item, um, but two, it helps us not get as many returns because it's right there in the pictures. They can see exactly what the measurements are. So I would suggest doing that. And then the last thing I would say with pictures is make sure you're taking at least four pictures. So don't take one or two pictures, four pictures minimum. And that's minimum. Typically we do between like six to eight pictures. Make sure you're taking pictures of any flaws, point them out. Out, describe them, um, tag, brand, stitching, all the graphics. Just take good, high quality pictures. It doesn't matter if you're using a camera or a smartphone, just make sure the pictures are high quality and make sure you're taking at least four. All right, technique number two to get more sales on eBay is try out doing free shipping. And listen, I know that there's a lot of like debate and controversy around, should I do free shipping? Should I not do free shipping? I'm not saying that if you don't do free shipping, you won't sell stuff. All I'm saying is that 
proven across the board, when you do free shipping, your sales increase. And if you think about it, it does just make sense, right? From a, from a consumer's point of view, if I have an item listed and another seller has the exact same item as me listed and we have the exact same feedback, good feedback, the pictures are good, everything's the exact same, right? And the one seller has the item priced at $24.99 plus $5 shipping, okay? And then my item is priced at $29.99 with free shipping. From a psychological point of view, just because of that free shipping, a customer is gonna look at the two listings and more than likely is gonna go with the free shipping option. Again, not saying that's always the case, but on eBay in particular, you get a little fast and free badge on your listing and Again, this is just opinion, but in my opinion, when you have free shipping on, eBay gives you a little boost in their search engine ranking. So maybe again, if it was between me and another seller, maybe mine would have popped up before his as well and would have been recommended to the buyer. I don't know if that's true. Again, I'm not saying that stuff doesn't sell if it doesn't have free shipping on it. A lot of what we do is paid shipping and we're experimenting with that on an ongoing basis. But what I can tell you from experience is when we take off free shipping, and then we put free shipping back on, we sell more stuff with free shipping on. The other thing is I don't suggest doing free shipping with large items that cost a lot of money to ship because God forbid you get a return and you have to pay for shipping there and shipping back, it could really hurt your pocket, right? So we only recommend doing free shipping on cheaper to ship items. So first class and padded flat rate, flat rate envelope items, those are the ones that I would start out with. So right now, if you're doing uh, paid shipping on first class items, my suggestion to you would be don't trust me, go test it out yourself. So take half of your items that are first class, put half of them on free shipping and leave the other ones as paid shipping and just track it, see which one sells better for you. If paid shipping is still selling better, no worries, keep it as paid shipping. If free shipping is selling better, maybe you should switch the other items to free shipping as well. But at the end of the day, you know, in my opinion, um, I, I think you can blame Amazon for kind of like drilling it into, at least in America, drilling it into our heads that, you know, Amazon Prime, everything is free two day shipping, free one or two day shipping. So we're kind of like accustomed to that. They've got us accustomed to expecting free shipping. And a lot of people, you know, eBay and Amazon, it's, they're still e-commerce websites. So when they, when they go to purchase something, and I'm the same way, when I go to purchase something, usually I'll sort it by free shipping and you know fast and free shipping because I want the item quick and I don't wanna pay for shipping. So even though I'm adding the price, the shipping price into the item, it's still like psychologically for people, they think they're getting free shipping. So anyway, the debate is still out on that. Again, these are all just opinions, but opinions based on fact from our side and from watching other people's stores. Hundreds and hundreds of other people's stores implement this. But again, I say this to tell you to go and test it out yourself and see what happens. Okay, the next tip I can give you is add best offer to your listings and send out best offers on a regular basis. This one's pretty simple. It is what it is. You can add best offer to your items so that when a buyer sees your items, a potential buyer, they can send an offer to you and you can choose to either accept it or decline it. You can also set up your best offers to auto decline and auto accept. Now for that side of things, I only recommend doing auto accept. So if I have something listed for $100 and I know the least amount of money I'll take for it is 70, I will set my auto accept to $70. So if someone offers 80, it automatically gives them the item. Now, personally, I don't put on auto decline because in our case, we've had people, again, let's go back to a hundred dollar item. We've had people offer $20 on that item, just like straight low ball. And we will send them a counter offer back of like 10 bucks under. So a lot of the times people just try, they'll throw something super low out there just to see what you say. And we'll come back hard. We'll say, listen, we'll give you 10% off, but that's the best we can do. And a lot of the times we've converted people that have really low balled us. We've converted that into a sale. So I recommend not using auto decline, using auto accept is fine, um, but I definitely recommend putting best offer on there. And then again, the other thing is you should be sending out offers as well. Um, I tell people to, at the very minimum, I tell people to do it on a nightly basis. So sit down for 10 minutes and just on your phone, or you can go onto the computer and do it in bulk. You can send like a 15% off offer to uh, multiple items, but at least once a night, go on there and send out best offers. And you know, we get a lot of sales just from doing that, sending out those best offers. Okay, so to recap really quick, first three things I suggested, take better pictures, 
try offering free shipping and add best offer to your listings and send best offer out. Now, suggestion number four is definitely one that's been talked about off and on again on eBay for a while. Um, but my suggestion number four is promote your items on eBay. So eBay has like different tools we can use to get more sales. They put them out there, whether you like them or not, there are tools that you can use to get more sales and promoting your items, paying that extra promotion fee, that's a tool that you can use to get more sales. So for those of you who don't know how promoted listing works, it's basically an extra percentage fee that you pay on top of the final value fee that eBay already charges you. So if I'm selling something for $100 and my final value fees are 10%, that's 10 bucks. If I promote that item and it sells through promoted listings, so just because you promote something doesn't mean that it's, it's going to sell through promoted listings. It could still sell in eBay's organic search. But let's say I promote it at 5% extra and it sells through promoted listings. So now I pay that 10%, $10 plus an additional 5%, $5 five more dollars. So instead of paying $10, I'm paying $15, but I've promoted that item and by promoting it, it puts it in front of more people's eyes and theoretically it should get that item to sell faster. And we do use promoted listings. We use them on, I would say probably 80% of the stuff that we list and it works well for us. We track everything. Typically we're paying around five to 8% because that's what we use. Um, we use five to 8% on most things that we promote. So we do not go by eBay's suggested percentage when we're promoting items. We go by our you know, what we've tested in the past, which what works well for us is five to 8%. We've tested everything. We've tested at 20%. We've tested at 1%. We've tested with it off. We've tested with it on. And for us, that's kind of like the sweet spot, five to 8%. The other thing is, again, we only really promote stuff that we feel has enough competition. So if we're listing something and there's only five other sellers with that same exact item, that's not something that we're gonna promote because there's not a lot of competition. But if we're listing a pair of Nike shoes and there's a thousand other sellers selling the exact same item, obviously we would want to promote that item because it pushes us up to the top and it should get our item in front of more eyes than somebody who's not promoting that item. So again, suggestion number four is try promoting your items. Okay, so moving on, number five is fix your titles and your item specifics. This one kind of irks me a little bit because I scroll through eBay all the time. I buy a lot of stuff on eBay myself. I like to shop for vintage t-shirts. I actually bought this shirt on eBay. Um, but I see it all the time where people, when they list something, their title is just not being utilized in the correct way. So they may list this t-shirt and just put in the title, vintage Grateful Dead t-shirt, and that's it. They don't put the color, they don't put the tag, they don't put anything that pertains to the shirt. So my suggestion is to use that title. Try to use all the characters, as many as you can anyway, in that title. Use relevant, good keyword search terms to put in there. Stuff like brand, size, color, gender, stitching, tag, all of those are really good keywords to put in the title of the listing. And then avoid stuff like don't list with all caps. You don't wanna do that. Even though it may make your listing stand out in search, it's bad for SEO. So it could hurt your rankings on eBay and on Google. So don't use all caps. If you wanna capitalize the first letter of each word, that's fine, but don't list in all caps. And then also don't use like special characters, don't use a lot of exclamation marks, definitely don't use emojis, don't use a little fire icon, anything like that. Um, just make sure you're listing good, clean titles that make sense. Don't use keywords that don't pertain to the item and try to fill up that entire title. And then same thing with item specifics. Make sure that you're matching those same things in your item specifics. Put the brand in, put the size in, put the color in, put the model in, whatever you need to do, just make sure you're using as many item specifics as you can and make sure you are maximizing the use of your title. At the end of the day, those two things, that's how people find your items on eBay. When it goes into search, that's what eBay, when eBay's robots go and crawl all the listings, if I'm searching for Grateful Dead tea, that's what they look at and they go and then they put up all the relevant listings based on the title and the item specifics. So those are the most important things other than pictures, but even more so for search, those are the most important things that you wanna make sure you get right. Are you guys enjoying this video so far? I hope so. Um, I really hope maybe you've already picked up some stuff that could help increase your eBay sales. The last suggestion that I'm gonna give you today, number six, is 
buy the right items in the first place. So we're all guilty of this. I've told the story before when we first started out um, and I was really excited. I went to the thrift store with $200 and I bought all the brands that I thought were expensive and I thought would sell for good money on eBay. And then when I got home and did my research and started listing, they just weren't selling for enough money. And I actually ended up redonating a lot of those items. So again, we're all guilty of it, but going back to it, Make sure you are doing your research. Learn about sell-through rate. So if there's 100 items actively listed on eBay, and then you look at the sold items, so you do the filter and look at the sold items, and let's say there's 100 sales, 100 listed, 100 sales, that's a 100% sell-through rate. But let's say there's 100 items listed and only 10 sales of that same item. That's only a 10% sell-through rate, and it's probably something that you want to avoid. So typically when we're buying something for eBay, we're looking for a 50% sell-through rate or better. So if there's 100 listed, we wanna see at least 50 sales. So that's what sell-through rate is. The other thing that you wanna keep in mind is what are the items actually selling for? So what's the average sales price of the items that you're considering purchasing? There's a lot of work that goes into listing something on eBay. Again, looking it up, coming up with the title, doing all the item specifics, taking the pictures, shipping it after it sells, all of that is work and all of that takes time and energy to do. So in my opinion, I don't think that you should be focusing on lower end brands that you can only sell for eight to $10, even if you're getting them really cheap, even if you're getting them at 50 cents. And this is something that drives me crazy, especially recently. I've seen a lot of people doing these wholesale lots and wholesale boxes of like bad brands that are like, like I said, $5, $8, $10 items. And again, even if you're getting them for a couple bucks, if you're getting a brand like Aeropostale for $2 and selling it for $8 after your shipping and after your time spent, time is money, after your time spent to do all the work, you're maybe profiting like a dollar and that is not worth it. And that is the easiest way to get burned out. And again, it drives me crazy because these people selling stuff like that, they're gonna make those resellers give up. And at the end of the day, this is about helping the community out, not hurting the community. So be aware of that, be cautious of it, make sure you're looking at that sell through rate, make sure you're looking at that average sales price and try to, and especially when you first start out, try to focus on items with a higher average sales price so that you are getting more money for the items that you're listing and you can take that money back and put it into better and better buys. And there you go, guys, there's six proven methods to help increase sales on eBay. I really hope that that helped you out. Please, again, do me a favor, smash that thumbs up button and share this video with someone who you care about and all the best of luck selling on eBay out there. That's what I want you guys to do. I want you to be successful in what you're doing. And if we can be a small little push, a small little help for that, that's what we love to do. And then I know a lot of you guys have been messaging me asking when we're gonna open up our mentoring program again. We are scheduled to open that back up at the end of August. So at the end of August, we'll open up another 75 spots, let people in and then close it again. So if you're interested in that, very simply rallyroots.com slash mentoring, go and put your email on the waiting list and you'll get an email when we open up those spots. And again, that's not something that you have to do either. We didn't do it with any mentoring. We just kind of like pushed our way through it and we learned as we went. So that is something you can do. There's lots and lots of good YouTube videos like this out there that you can watch and learn yourself. So you don't need a mentoring program. It's just a little extra boost. It's like a cheat sheet to get you to where you want to go faster. So anyway, guys, thanks again for watching. I'm Ryan Roots. I love you guys more than you will ever know. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Peace out.